All right, guys, this is Ross. I think I have enough fig trees. What do you guys think? Um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend this for the average person. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very serious about this. This is a big part of my life, growing figs. But even for somebody like myself, I wouldn't recommend this. You know, this is just a lot of trees. Um, this is just a glimpse, I guess, into the future of what we're going to be selling, uh, what we're going to be rooting um, cause we are rooting cuttings here and that's what we're going to talk about today is actually rooting fig cuttings outside in the spring in pots. But these trees here are also for uh, rootstock. We're going to graft some. Actually, I think I have a whole bin right here just of rootstock and maybe a little bit more. Um, we're also going to be up potting a lot of these trees into five gallon size pots, which is this size right here. It's about 12 inches by 12 inches. Um, and then we also have, you know, rootstock back here that's persimmon seedling rootstock that we'll graft onto uh, for the future, for the future orchard. I'm grafting a couple of varieties, but mainly sejo. Uh, we're going to graft a number of those trees. So then when I plant them out next year, we have a, a full orchard or, you know, a good amount of sejo trees. And then also we've got here some gumi cuttings that we've dipped in rooting hormones, stuck them in soil. We're doing them the same way we're doing the figs. And so this is a fig specific video, but in terms of rooting, but you can do this any way you guys want or any species of tree you want. And I'm giving you this option here of how to do this outside in pots in the spring, because it's nice to see a different point of view. There's a million and one ways to do the same thing. That's the beauty of gardening. That's the beauty of growing fruit trees and plants. You know, and I think, uh, you know, this is going to be obviously wildly different depending on where you live. Maybe if you're in Florida, you might want to start your rooting in the spring. Maybe you want to start it in the wintertime. Uh, you know, there's multiple growing seasons down there. Maybe in um, California or Arizona, you guys would do this in the winter. Um, so it depends, really. I think for a lot of us, though, largely across the United States, this is the time to do it. We haven't had our last frost yet, but if a frost is anticipated, need to cover these trees, need to cover these plants, or get them inside somewhere. That's our big worry. However, what we're doing right now is, even though it's not our last frost, it is rather warm out here. So we need to get them kind of actually calloused up particularly the fig tree, is that if you don't get that callousing process happening, and you won't know that this is even happening because it's below the soil, unless you've been doing this for a long time and you've really inspected these trees and really observed the rooting process carefully, this callousing process has got to happen. And it usually takes about two to four, maybe even six weeks, depending on the cutting. This can happen actually in your fridge and uh, it can happen just in wet soil or moist soil. So that's what we're kind of doing now. Even though these cuttings back here that we're rooting haven't really shown much growth just yet, there is activity below the soil. That is the process that is happening. I did have some in the greenhouse and that was a great environment, uh, but I'm making better use of that space. So I brought a lot of them out here. And then what I've done is I've actually taken the top off of my cold frame. This cold frame really helps with extending the season throughout the winter of my annual crops and then also getting an early start to the season for those annual crops. Now that it's warm and as I said we've had pretty a, a pretty warm April um, it's really a good idea to take this plastic off because it's getting too warm. Those cool loving annuals they like this weather out here it's kind of chilly today uh, so I took the cold frame top off and then screwed in some of these boards. These are pressure treated just so I can make it last long. You guys can get cedar if you want or some other type of wood. But um, just screw these in with deck screws and you can take them out obviously anytime you want. So in the fall, this goes back on, I take off the boards, put the boards on in the spring, set this up and we're looking good. Because what this is doing here is it's creating the right environment. And I've talked a lot about in other videos, rooting these fig trees and cuttings really either in many different ways, whether that's indoors, which have been the most the majority of our videos have been indoor rooting, creating an artificial environment with grow lights, 
but also we've done this just by sticking fig cuttings right in the ground, that old Italian man way of propagating fig cuttings that we've talked about so many times. I've had great success with that, by the way, to a pretty ridiculous degree. And the reason for that, I think, is that even though it rains a lot here in the spring, and that's when I do my rooting is the first thing in the spring, there is not a large amount of organic material in my soil. It's very clay, and I think because it's just such a heavy clay, these actually these cuttings do really well in that. The low organic material I think really helps. So in this particular situation, we gotta have the right environment because if we just had them in pots outside of this plastic and they're exposed like this, they're gonna get rained on a lot. You know, where I live, the April showers bring May flowers saying is like literally true. I mean, maybe not the flower part, but it rains a lot here in April. It rains a lot here in May. So the beginning of our spring is just kind of rainy and cold. That's a recipe for disaster for fig cuttings. You don't want it cold. You want the temperature to be absolutely critical somewhere around 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously that's not happening right now, but this callousing process is beginning. We are getting this process going. And if I can keep the right level of soil moisture throughout this process, and even the next two months, we're gonna have much more higher degree of success. So that's what this plastic is. Again, I took the top off the, uh, the cold frame, attached the boards. The nice thing about this is that it's on an angle. It rains a lot. Mosquitoes can breed. You get standing water. So having this on an angle where the water just sheds right off, I don't have to come out here and actually push this up as I did last year. This is a three foot long board. And then the other side actually I think is like two foot. I actually trimmed them. And uh, the nice part about this, it's a nice height. So these plants underneath can get taller and not really be disturbed by that. But also I can get in here very easily. This is a nice wide opening. And again, th this is kind of amateur, honestly. This is kind of amateur. This is not really a professional way of doing this. Um, ideally, probably we have shelving it's at my waist or something like that. And then above it is the greenhouse, is the perfect environment that's humidity regulated, temperature regulated. We've get, you know, really that stable, stable, perfect condition for these figs, not just the temperature, humidity, the sunlight, the soil moisture as well. This plastic also helps diffuse the light. That's really critical. So if you're going to be doing this, Here's my lesson of this video, is that you have to get the right environment. If you don't have the right environment, you're gonna struggle, you're not gonna succeed. Uh, you're gonna have really low numbers of rooting these cuttings outdoors, and you're gonna probably regret it, and then you're gonna do it indoors next year. So I would just highly recommend, this could be very easy or it can be very difficult. Get the right environment. This particular plastic works extremely well. The other option you have is a shade cloth um, or even like a really good insect netting that blocks some of the sun. Because you don't want this, these cuttings here too hot, you don't want them too cold, you don't want them too wet, you don't want them too dry. Uh, you know, you got to get the right environment. So uh, as long as it's stable, this part of the yard, by the way, or this part of the patio doesn't get a ton of light. Maybe five, six hours a day, plus the light is diffused by this plastic. So this is really, again, critical. I think I probably said that like five times already, but I think you guys get the point. Um, create some sort of environment. Uh, I have a friend in New York City who roots fig cuttings. What he does is he creates a box, a closet, and then wraps the whole closet with, uh, with uh, shade cloth. Has a door actually that opens up he gets in there, he waters them, he does what he needs to do, closes the door. So, you know, there's many different ways to do the same thing, as I mentioned, but you're doing this outdoors, it's critical that you get this right, this environment right. Um, again, I have fig cuttings here that we've rooted indoors, we brought them outdoors, they got sunburn. Actually, there's an update on this because we talked about this very recently in a video. We talked about actually messing this up and getting our young fig trees more established. Uh, throughout this whole sunburn process, I mentioned that it's kind of a big loss, really big mistake, rookie mistake. You can see the sunburn down there. That's a good example of uh, burnt leaves. 
A lot of them have dropped off. They look very sad. However, they're strong plants. And if they weren't strong plants, I wouldn't have brought them out here. They're starting to leaf out now. So this one here, as an example, is putting out new leaves. So yeah, it was a big mistake. It was um, something you don't want to do is get them sunburned. You want to adjust them to that, that sunlight outdoors very slowly, carefully, but it's not the end of the world. I probably lost maybe one or two trees out of the whole thing, which is a big, a big win for me, at least in my book. Uh, so yeah, that's it. We're going to have fig trees for sale soon because I just have too many. I mean, look, look at that. Look, look how many bins I have. So we're going to get this out to, to people. I know a lot of people have been asking. Um, I said late May, but I think actually we'll get this uh, started, this whole process started relatively soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks. I'll do a video letting people know. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great season. All right. Take care. We'll see you guys for the next one. Hit that subscribe button for me if you got something out of this.